Hello guys, in this tutorial we're going to look at hooking a TI-83 Plus series graphing calculators to a breadboard and how to output from the calculator to an LED and how to in get input from buttons that you press that the calculator can read. So you can hook your calculator up to a breadboard and then how you can do output and input on the breadboard. So setting up, the pin and the ring are the voltage sources while the sleeve is the ground. So here is the end of your link cable. So the other end is plugged into the calculator. And so the end, you got your tip, your ring, and your sleeve, which the tip and ring act as two voltage sources, and the sleeve is your ground. The pin should be connected to the top voltage line of the breadboard, while the ring should be connected to the bottom voltage line of the breadboard. Um, top and bottom is relative, but basically you want to plug the tip and the ring into separate voltage lines. Um, the sleeve should be connected to one of the ground lines of the breadboard, and the ground line should be connected to the other ground line with the wire. So essentially you connect the two ground lines, so you can use both of them. So here's the example. Um, I have a wire. This is just a diagram. A uh, I'll have a picture of um, how I actually do it in a second. So here we have a uh, wire going from the tip to the voltage line, which is usually marked as a plus, and, and it's red. And then we have the ground, and as you can see the sleeve, it's going to the ground line, which is usually blue and marked as minus. So the sleeve's connected to the ground line. The ring's connected to the other voltage line. Now this right here is a wire going from this ground line to this ground line. So essentially I can, when, if I connect the two ground lines, then I can use both ground lines rather than only being able to use the top one. So this is how I actually did it. Um, you, this is, um, you can attach wires to the pen ring and sleeve using wire tape. So as you can see, what I did is I wrapped a wire around the tip, wrapped a wire around the ring, and wrapped a wire around the sleeve and then I used wire tape to keep it together. That's sort of a temporary solution and it won't actually damage your link cable. So if you want a temporary solution that will uh, not actually damage your cable, uh, this is a very simple way to do it. So here, if we go to the slide, I have a wire coming out of the top. Uh, that's the tip wire, a wire coming out the middle, which is the ring wire, and a wire coming out the bottom, which is the sleeve. So this one is the ground wire, while these two are voltage sources. So what I've done is I've plugged the ground wire into this um, ground line up here. Then I've connected these two grounds with this blue wire. Then I've connected... Uh, Two, wire, two different wires here, one for the tip and one for the ring. And they're both connected into separate voltage lines. So essentially, once you've done this, you can actually control the individual voltage lines um, with the calculator. So output works by placing an object which can be powered with little current in between the pin or the ring, the voltage source, and the sleeve, the ground. So as you can see, I have the tip, then there's an LED, and then that goes to the ground. And there's the ring and an LED, and that goes to the ground. I'll actually light the LED. The calculator only outputs 3.3 volts and a very low current, which is not enough to power many things. It is, however, enough to light an LED. I measured the voltage with my, cal uh, with my multimeter, and it seems to be about 3.21 volts. And the um, I measured the amps, the current, and it measures... 567 microamps. So as you can see, that's really low. I wouldn't rely on these numbers. Um, I don't know how accurate they are. My multimeter is really cheap. So, but that's what I got. So basically, the whole point is, um, you got a decent voltage, but very low current. Um, due to the internal resistance being so high, you actually usually won't need resistors. Um, uh, in the in this simple circuit. Um, you'll need resistors if you have like an external power source to get more volts and more um, amps. But if you're just using the uh, the power sources just on um, the calculator, you're actually usually not going to need any resistors. 
because the internal resistance is already so high. That's why the current's only 567 microamps. So here, what I've done is I've just taken two LEDs and I've plugged them directly into the power and ground source on both sides. And as you can see, they both light. So the long leg of the LED goes into the uh, the uh, voltage line, the uh, plus, and then the short leg goes into the, the uh, blue line, the negative, the ground line. And as you can see, they both light. And I just put this image here to show you that this is a breadboard. So I moved the LED from here to here, and then I've connected the red line to this input of the LED and connected the ground line to this input of the LED, and the LED still lights. So the idea here is just you can, it is a breadboard, so you can move things around and start wiring things up and stuff like that. So the individual voltage lines um, and in turn the individual LEDs in this case can be controlled using the program out that we've seen in the last tutorials. So the right value of the, uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3, those are the, the values you can send the program out. And this is exactly uh, how the uh, tip and the ring voltage line will respond. So if you send 0, they're both high. If you send 1, the tip goes low. 2, the ring goes low. And 3, they both go low. So here I have the clock program I showed in previous videos running on my calculator. And as you can see, the LEDs actually sort of count up like a clock. So a binary clock. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. So as you can see, I'm controlling the output, the two LEDs, on a breadboard from my calculator. So now we're going to look at input. So, input works by connecting either the pin or the ring directly into the sleeve, which is the ground. An input is red when a connection is made, and that input is not red when the connection is broken. A button can be placed in the middle of the connection, which when pressed will be read as an input. The tip and the ring can each read a single input individually, so two buttons can be used. So this is the same circuit as the output, but I've replaced the buttons LEDs. When you push this button down, it will make a connection directly from the tip to the ground, which is the tip to the sleeve, directly from the voltage source up here to the ground, which will be read as an input. And same here. So there are two different places you can read inputs. So here's, the, uh, here's how I set it up. So I have from this, this voltage line up here, I've connected a button to a button, and then I've connected the other end of that button to the ground. So when I press this button down, it makes a direct connection from the, the positive voltage source up here to the ground. And then same over here, except it's this voltage source is connected to the button, which then is connected to the ground. So again, here are the input values um, from the program, um, program N. So by default, you'll be reading um, 3. But when this button is pulled down, the one connected to the tip, it'll change to a 2. If just this button is pressed down that's connected to the ring, it will, uh, it will uh, be um, you'll get a 1. So if, when they're both pressed down, you'll get a 0. So here's a simple code I made using program N um, in TI Basic to see that it changes the input in real time. So all it says is loop. Um, forever until a key is pressed and every time it loops it's going to call program in and then display and so it's just going to keep displaying the input forever until you press the button and the program ends so here I have um, it's constantly reading threes you can see there are just a whole bunch of threes because I have no buttons pressed down but if I press this button down the top one it changes to a whole bunch of ones now if I press the bottom button down, it changes to twos. Now if I press both buttons down, it changes to all zeros. So th this is how you can actually read input from um, components in your breadboard.